Good morning. This is the New York City Board of Standards and Appeals Public Review Session for January 13th, 2020. We'll begin with the appeals calendar, new cases, item number 1, 2018-170A, 5103 Van Damme Street, Queens. Uh, this matter is going to be postponed to March 17th as agreement upon with all parties. Mm -hmm. Item special order calendar, item number 2. 389.85 BC, 2090 Bronxdale Avenue, the Bronx. Um, we need still a landscaping drawing that shows the planting bed details and dimensions of the planting bed um, to be not less than four feet wide to support the healthy arbor vitae. The clothes bins um, are to be removed and they're not shown on the existing conditions drawing so it's not clear they're being removed. Um, uh, the work has to be done now before we make a decision. And I have comments also from Commissioner Otley Brown, who's out today. Um, the light spill diagram still registers high on Brady Avenue, and there's an apartment building across the street, so that needs to be adjusted. Other comments? Same comments, you. Just one, one additional minor comment, which is the um, approval from FDNY still list the keys as, as 95 instead of 85. Oh, okay. This is the latest approval I looked at and it still says 389-95. Okay. So oh. it could be either like a quick fix or even a statement during the hearing tomorrow. Yeah, right. I, um, I didn't see the community board. Had, say again? I didn't see the community board hmm. um, recommendation. Was that submitted? Um, no, uh, no, you're right. We do not have a community board. No, but it says the, um, wait a second, uh, Mr. Ronan said he reached out to the community board, but they never appeared before them. So it sounds like they waived their. Um, just with regards to the cloth bin, um, it seems there is space for the cloth bin to be there, it, as long as it does not obstruct any of the ADA accessibility. Uh, routes, uh, and if that's the case, then they should be included in the drawings, right? That's what you are Well, so, you know, I do have to say is I, I don't, the, the board has generally not permitted these closed bins, okay. and I don't know what the history of that is. So okay. generally, the comment is take that's them true. away. That's uh, yeah. I don't know what the history of that is, whether it's because they attract vermin or they're not maintained. I actually, if somebody can enlighten me, I'd be interested in finding out what the objection is. I don't know if they're used, you know, um, like who collects the clothes from the bin. Because <coughs> these days we recycle things, right? If there's a place to, if there's a place to recycle to, like clothing, that's sort of a good thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's what happens with the clothing. Right. You just sit yeah, there Yeah, sometimes rot. the complaints, Madam Chair, were of the, of the effect of sometimes it, it creates an unsightly condition. Some people mm -hmm. rummage through it and Mm -hmm. you know, mess it up and mm -hmm. things like that. And, you know, there have been some complaints from the community boards okay. on those. Item, you go, mm -hmm. move on. Item number three, 13887BZ, 21836 Hillside Avenue, Queens. Oh, here we go. Um, here we go. Uh, just a, a, a dismissal warning letter um, was sent out to the owner and the applicant return receipt on 10-23-19, and so they did respond to our questions. And I think this submission shows compliance with most of the open issues other than the real resurfacing of the lot, which the applicant states was done this past year. This was the case where they resurfaced half, but they didn't move. They sort of moved <coughs> the cars from one side to the other, but then not back, and resurfaced the other half. So um, I'm thinking, because I don't want this to just go on and on, we could have a condition that the lot be fully surfaced in three years from the date of the grant. Yeah. Did I, I, was, I visited this site on um, Thursday, actually, and I believe resurfacing, resurfacing is part. Ah, okay. But, you know, for instance, the photos, show these hairline cracks that are patched? They, I believe they were sealed. I looked at them, it sounds like they, they sealed. But they things. just filled in the cracks. I think the issue was that they were supposed to, you know, uh, 
put another top coat, top layer on it as opposed to a simple sealer? Yes, that's what they did. They yeah. sealed the cracks and they kind of like put a coat on top of that. They didn't put additional asphalt. That, that's what I mean. Normally they do like a half inch top coat on top of the existing. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't do that in that portion of the lot. So that's why they said that you do this every three years. So if maybe we make a condition that it every three, in three years they resurface the lot. Um, they also provided an operational plan, which should be included in the conditions. And, um, uh, and I just wanted, uh, this was a note from another time, that general counsel, our general counsel, should note that the reference in the prior resolution to a special permit was in error. Um, the pre-61 variance was extended under 1141. Um, yeah. Okay. Would we want to add a, a line saying that the light should be zero at the lot line? Say again? Could, that, that the light should be zero at the, light, at the lot line because all they're saying is that the, the lights are facing down. Okay. Okay. So, and then, so a condition would be Correct. lights zero at the lot. It yeah, might be in the, the operational plan, but just in case it's not. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking at the pictures here. Yeah, yeah they so just, they just sealed the crack. That's what I mean. So on the other side, though, they they resurfaced it. They actually put a top coat on, and on this side they didn't. They just filled in the cracks. Maybe I didn't notice yeah. that because they were cars stopping yeah. the other side. Okay. okay. Move on. Mm -hmm. Item number four, 90-91, 630, 636 City Island Avenue of the Bronx. We have a request for an adjournment. Yes. Item number five, 5597 BZ, 7636, 164th Street, Queens. We have a request for an adjournment. Yes. Please. Item number six, 24503 BZ, 160-11, Willits Point Boulevard, Queens. We also have a request for an adjournment. Yes. <clears throat> New cases, item number seven, 11594BZ, 2470-2480, Bedford Avenue, Brooklyn. Okay, um, we have proof of service of initial application and of notice of hearing to officials. Community board recommends conditional approval with 24 in favor and seven abstaining. They express extreme reservations about the ma maintenance of this site. Um, so I think extension of the term is not obvious unless we can ensure better responsiveness and cooperation by the owner. The property owner and business operator should attend all of the hearings. Um, the community board's conditions were hours of operation limited to 9 a.m., 6 p.m. Monday to Saturday, no parking of vehicles on the sidewalk, no body fender work or painting to be done on the premises, trash dumpsters to be stored inside until immediately prior to pickup. Um, but then the community board had further uh, comments in their sort of general minutes, and it talks about the applicant continues to use the sidewalk and illegally park cars in the street, or continues on the sidewalk, hours of operation are extended beyond the commitment, Police officers from the 70th Precinct have responded to the site on scores of occasions, issued dozens of violations, and towed several vehicles. Um, the community board does not believe there has been a good faith effort to manage this auto body repair shop located in a residential district in a matter that does not offend area residents as was conditioned in Board 14's approval previously. So I think uh, their observations actually are borne out by visits and photographs. Mm -hmm. um, they did request a waiver of the rules to apply a, a little bit late. Um, proof of continuous use, um, they used Google imagery, but it should be exterior images, not interior ones, mm -hmm. um, not a picture of a sign, because you don't know where that is. Um, all of the images um, that they provided show cars parked on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And then if I look at Google timeline photos, um, they um, actually, oh, and, and some of their images they provided appear to be for the wrong site. They're for the corner site, and this is a mid-block site. This is block 5167, lot 40, um, which is a mid-block site with a full um, building, lot line to lot line building on it, not the vacant lot on the corner. Um, 
The 2017 photos show three businesses at the site, Bedford Tires, Bedford Diagnostic, and Rendis Auto Rebuilder. None of these are permitted to involve body fender work or spray painting. And I'm, with the way I read the community board's comments, they're doing body work somehow. I mean, maybe I misinterpret what they're saying, but it sounds like it. The 2017 and 2018 image capture and the 2017 photos that they provided show tires and cars stored on the sidewalk. That's not an acceptable practice and was a problem in 2008 when the board last heard this. So ha the question is how to bring this operator into compliance or shut it down because it can't continue to ignore all the instructions from this board, the community board, it made deals and it doesn't, it doesn't honor the agreements. Um, the drawings provided need to demonstrate that signage complies with C1 regulations um, and show what the regulations are and how the drawings comply. There's a letter from the architect that sign states that the signage exceeds the allowable. Mm -hmm. So if it does, it has to be brought into compliance. But I would like to discuss with the architect um, and the owner how many establishments there are because the architect may not understand how you calculate the per establishment signage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I don't know how many establishments they are, if they're all the same business and they just have many different names or what. We do have a letter of no objection from the fire department and then I have Commissioner Ali Brown's comments. Um, the applicant is not complying with the condition to stop parking on the sidewalk. It was evident <coughs> in the photos as well as during a site visit that I made on January 3rd. Signage 384.5 square feet total and non illuminated is too much signage. There are tires on the sidewalk and cars on the sidewalk and pictures. They need, um, needs, they need uh, continuous use proven and a hardship argument, which is a good point, um, for expiration of the term in July 30th, 2016. They have to indicate the uh, hardship, um, serious loss or whatever. Substantial prejudice. Say again? Substantial prejudice. Substantial prejudice, that's it. Yeah. Um, any other comments? Um, I think you repeated, um, you've stated some of my comments. Um, I do have to say with regards to the signage, um, as part of the 2007 uh, approved plan, the maximum amount of signage that was uh, approved was 384 uh, square feet. Uh, no, actually, it was much less than 384 square feet. So, yep. so we don't I'm know sorry. how much. Okay, it was less than uh, what is there today. And the applicant in its application stated that they are providing and they're meeting the regulations of of an earlier B, uh, BZ approval to me, which does not make sense because no. that should be superseded by what was approved um, and by the approved plan of 2007, which is I think 1594. And that was to meet the signage requirement of C1 and C2, right. yes. not to exceed 150 square feet. Um, so I don't think we should be going back to the 1924 approved plan, uh, which is BZ 562-25 BZ. Right. So despite the establishment issue, um, we need to understand what the 2007 approval was, if that was for the entire building. Well, so if, if you comply, if, if the last approval in July, in 2008, was that the uh, signage shall comply with C1 zoning regulations. Okay. So whatever the C1 zoning regulations are, that's what they have to do. Okay. And if C1 allows per establishment calculation, then you do a per establishment calculation, okay. but um, you can't, do whatever you want, which is more or less what they're doing. So, um, I had the same question about the continuous use and the uh, photographs that uh, that have been provided. They don't quite prove uh, the continuity um, and um, hardship has been raised. There, are, um, some of the photos show that trash was stored out, uh, not within the building, but it was outside. And same thing with the tire issue. Um, I also think the site is not kept in good condition just because of the fact that you have cars and tires and a lot of the business operation is happening at the street frontage. So right. a lot more improvement needs to happen and we need to get a clear operational plan and signage that says no parking on the sidewalk. Um, we don't know what the lighting situation is. Um, that also needs to be understood. Okay. 
So again, I'm going to reiterate that we need to see the owner, the property owner, and also the operators of the businesses here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I hope we could find something more than just a, a, their a operational plan that we can make something concrete to address some of these issues because it doesn't seem like promises uh, that they make, especially to the community board just recently, are being held. Mm -hmm. So, um, and neither were they considered uh, after our first grant, so. Right, they just ignore it. We, they go away and they do. If we're going to grant this, we need to find some concrete way to. And I think I would say we should see some of those improvements prior to our approval. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, uh, <clears throat> I did go to the site last Thursday and uh, I would say the same conditions in the pictures are still there. Double park on the sidewalk. It's not on the street, on the sidewalk. You have two rows of cars being repaired, parking on the sidewalk. This is one thing. The adjacent site, actually, I looked at it as well. The one at the corner, it's, it yes. sounds like it's an abandoned uh, auto repair. <coughs> My concern is if this site gets developed with, with something like, let's say, residential, and that the subject applicant still like behave same way, it's it's gonna be I believe it's gonna be a scary situation for for whoever gonna live next to that repair shop. Right. Right? So they definitely they need to look at their operation and, and make like significant improvements on it. They also have a lot of repair bays inside. This is a large building, actually. So you would think there would be a way to keep the cars that are w awaiting service inside because there's a lot of room, the repair bays. But one thing I might say is one aspect of it is there's this small kind of storefront on the left, lower left side of it that's preventing access. And maybe what has to actually happen is you eliminate that and you have a drive up, and then yep. those cars awaiting service just go in and line up, and then they can move into the repair bays. It's sort of like greedy with too many storefronts. Yeah, I believe they need to look at the <coughs> uh, procedure for cars coming for repair to get stored inside, not outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. Move on. Mm -hmm. Item number 8, 4297 BC, 9320 Astoria Boulevard, Queens. This is being postponed? Yes, for failure to notice, right? Right. Yeah. So we shouldn't give any of our comments? No, because there's no hearing. Oh, you don't want to give? Oh, okay. okay. Just uh, the community board met on January 8th, and then the full board is going to meet on January 16th. Okay, so yeah. we even need to wait for them, right? Item number 9, 11698 BC, 5770 Highland Boulevard, Staten Island. This matter is going to be postponed. The hearing notices went out too late. Right. Okay. Item number 10. Oh, okay. what? oh you're not going to give any comments? Okay, sorry. Item number 10, 2308 BZ, 80-14 Chevy Chase Street, Queens. Way to begin. Also, before we continue, are you hearing reverberation on the mic? I'm concerned that it's picking up. Like when you speak, it's reverberating. So, Me? Yeah. Is it okay? I just want Carl yeah. to make sure maybe that we're not getting loud. feedback. Because it's too next to me. Yeah. I'll keep it to the side. Yeah, I'll yeah. put it to the side. Okay. So we have proof of service of initial application and of notice of hearing to officials. Um, the many minutes that Community Board 8 um, provided for from its several public meetings on this case are detailed <laughs> and very instructive. This is an application to legalize work done in defiance of the original variance to create an illegal banquet and catering facility in an R12 district and other non-compliances <clears throat> with the terms of the grant. The minutes speak to website advertising for use of the hall. We have seen this type of abuse far too often. My views on this subject have been consistent in all of the applications we see from houses of worship and schools. Banquet facilities are commercial operations and should not be permitted to operate in residential districts. The initial committee vote on the community board was a draw with four in favor and four opposed. And later when it became clear that the synagogue was not uh, cooperating with the community <coughs> board's requests, um, eight were opposed and one in favor. And the November full board resolution was 32 opposed and one in favor of the application. Images that they, were, they provided of the kitchen 
with its formidable and well-used multi-burner stoves, griddles, and ovens, and the materials available online make clear that the kitchen is used for commercial catering as well as to support banquet events on site. We have several letters in opposition citing the nuisances caused by catering banquet hall events, cars parked for events that do not occur on a Saturday, garbage scattered in the neighborhood, noise from activities in the unlandscaped side yards, etc. There are 42 ECB violations and 18 DOB violations with over $100,000 in penalties owed. Teleco and we do not proceed on applications where there's penalties owed. Those have to be satisfied. Telecommunication equipment was also installed on the roof of this building. They need to provide the approved plans for this, DOB approved plans, and show that what was installed complies with the plans. Um, we received DOB plan approval in 2015 um, for a public assembly permit for 172 persons at tables in the cellar with no kitchen shown, 198 persons on the first floor, and 183 persons at the <coughs> second floor. No PA permits, however, were shown to have been issued. So they filed plans which were approved, but we don't see them having obtained a permit. Um, the 2015 um, temporary CO states that the maximum occupancy is 74 persons until the PA permit is obtained. So basically the entire place is being occupied illegally. So uh, fire department, you, you heard the request. Um, the architect and the director of the con congregation, someone with the authority to make decisions, must appear at the hearing. Um, and then I also have comments from uh, Commissioner Otley Brown. The building is now squared off in front, adding more floor area to the first and second floors. There is also a two-story bay window, which wasn't in the, in the BSA approval. The BSA approved plans have 220 seats in the first floor sanctuary, and the proposed plans have 198 seats in the first floor sanctuary. The original resolution stated that the seats were needed to satisfy the programmatic need to seat 440 members. So when did this change? What is the new programmatic need? Um, the previously approved plans say 7,379 square feet, 0.92 FAR. The proposed plans say 7,011 square feet, 0.88 FAR. How did the building actually get smaller in zoning square footage when the plans show that it is now larger since it is squared off and with a two-story bay window? And that space that's open to below, I don't see that that got bigger. It seems to me it's the same size. So. I don't think so. So I would want to see also floor area calculation diagrams um, to establish clearly what the floor area is. Um, and then I just want to, to the point of, um, uh, of the floor, yeah, so that's the floor area calculations. And then for Commissioner Otley Brown going on, although they say that programmatic needs is the reason for the amendment and the assembly space did not address the needs of the synagogue, to host customary re religious events like bar mitzvahs, brises, seders, et cetera, where food and drink is to be served. In reality, commercial catering is going on at the site as evidenced by the advertisements. No commercial catering should be approved without the parking requirement for banquet hall use being satisfied. But I'm like, you can't do commercial catering. It's a residence district, so never mind that. Um, and I also found a number of documents online that show, in addition, um, there's this, um, there's a particular type of um, site that lists establishments that are allowed to um, serve kosher and listed as caterers. It's a, something called um, Vad Har Harabonim of Queens, which lists this location as a certified kosher catering establishment. And it, of their entire list, this is the only one that's in a synagogue. All the others are obviously businesses, right? Um, and then we have a lot of other information that was provided to us about the um, commercial aspect of this activity. Others? Okay. So just bear with me. I think yeah, some yeah, of the sure. things are going to that's be repeats. Fine. Um, the application uh, uh, is proposing to decrease uh, the lecture hall area to 2,137 square feet 
for 214 uh, persons uh, occupancy, uh, which is a reduction from 224 person. Now, and that is being done through the change uh, in uh, changing the storage area and the stage to the youth area for, for uh, 44 people. Now, and that space is going to be separated by movable part partition. So they're making the argument that therefore the biggest space is going to be 214. And if you were to combine these two spaces, the maximum occupancy would be um, 227, which definitely is less than what was approved 224. Mm -hmm. And I, my question is why not 258? Because we have not seen a layout that shows how this space would result in a 200 and 27 total if they are combined. So we definitely need to see a layout of the combined space and how that would result in a 227 because my concern is 227 is that magic number which then results in uh, once you do the adjusted uh, parking requirement, uh, it falls less than 10 spaces. Ah, that's the magic number. And They're back it, it's a magic there. number. Anything above 228 you're over the 10 parking requirement and therefore waiver is not permitted. So I, we do need to understand the layout and how therefore it's <coughs> 127 spaces. Um, the applicant has stated uh, that the increase is being accommodated by removing the stage and the storage area adjacent to the assembly space, which is res resulting in higher occupancy. First of all, I'm not yet convinced as to how the 227 person capacity was arrived at, which goes back, sorry. Um, uh, it was arrived at keeping the use of the space as a banquet hall aside for the moment though within the bulk it increases the traffic and the parking need and this is an issue with the uh, this was an issue with the prior application and an applicant needs to provide further analysis both in terms of the occupancy and their and also a parking analysis mm -hmm. now the uh, the proposed change um, of the storage area to kitchen with commercial and non-commercial residential cooking appliances for e uh, events. Justifications were provided for the need for a commercial kitchen is, was to avoid the traffic problem that, were, that would be created. Uh, I don't think it was experienced, but they uh, anticipated that would happen um, uh, because catering um, um, vehicles would come and they'll block the traffic on the narrow street and, uh, um, and that would be even more of a harm. I don't know whether that happened and because of that they did it, but either way, uh, there are other ways of addressing it. And that could have been done by uh, seeking a no parking along just the Chevy uh, uh, frontage, um, the street frontage, of, and the cars could have been parked there for delivery and pickup. So this was a very extreme measure of addressing that. Um, the, the applicant is stating that the assembly space in the cellar did not address the need for religious ceremonies and ceremonies where food and drinks were served. It seems from the advertisement it was going to be used as a banquet hall. So I, I think from the very beginning that was in their mind and I yeah, think when you look at the plan, it seems as you always say, plans are very telling and mm -hmm. it, there is a storyline. Um, the underlying zoning, furthermore, the underlying zoning does not permit commercial catering. So even if, um, I mean, first of all, the board did not grant a waiver for that use, and second of all, the commercial catering banquet use is not permitted in this residential mm -hmm. district. So um, this should not be permitted, and uh, whatever going forward, I, I'm, I would be concerned if the commercial kitchen remains in, in <coughs> at that size. Yeah. Um, now, with regards to the site plan changes, um, the applicant is requesting a change in the landscaping plan that was requested, and the argument was that um, at the time, when it came time to, cons uh, to construct the landscaping, they realized that there was cellar below. Well, if you look at the approved plan, the, 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 the cellar was always extending yes. to the lot line, and um, the landscaping was going to be above that, so right. I, it shouldn't have come as a surprise at the time of construction. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure how that gets resolved, but we do need to find a better solution. I do have to say I did go to the site and um, maybe I was on a I was there on a good day, and it was in surrounding site uh, surrounding sidewalks and other things were in good condition. It was clean, um, and so was the building, um, the area outside area. Um, 
Commissioner Otley Brown also mentioned it, and the proposed change to the floor area, the floor plate has increased, and um, it, the, there was there is a bump out on the first and the second floor, and um, and it's a uniform floor plate of 50 feet by 42 feet, which is um, which definitely results in an increase in floor area, not a reduction in floor mm -hmm. area. So we do need to see a complete floor area analysis. Um, The parking uh, parking supply was raised as an issue during the initial uh, hear, uh, case hearing, and based on the site visit, it was difficult to find parking on street during a weekday, midday around the site. So um, I think we do need to reassess the parking. Since it's been such a long time, mm -hmm. parking demands and supply may have changed, so I, we should look at it again, and especially if they're proposing to have I mean, they cannot have catering. They can't then. have. It's but not, even if they're having their religious events, mm -hmm. we do need to still uh, get, we do need to understand the parking supply. Right. So, that's I think, you know, this whole thing about parking for synagogues where city planning has a special permit that says if people live within three quarters of a mile, that they're going to be really walking. And what's kind of ironic about that, that works perfectly well on on, you know, according to the religion, on the day of high prayer, right? But on the other days, when it's just festivities, you know, a wedding or something, that's just happening on a, on a typical day, on like a Tuesday, right? And so um, people are arriving in nice clothes, they're, you know, women with high heels, whatever, you're not walking three quarters of a mile. And so the, that special permit doesn't take into account the reality of what happens during those other days, and in these, in these, uh, in the synagogues, as in many of the uh, houses of worship, people come early in the morning for prayer, and they're coming by car because then the next stop is work, right? And so, if there's a lot of congregants who come, it's again the same issue with parking. But I don't think that's as big of an issue as when you have 250 people or something arriving for an event mm -hmm. on a Tuesday night mm -hmm. or, or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I always had a problem with this special permit that allows for the elimination of parking in car-dependent neighborhoods, you know? It's not like there's a subway nearby or yeah. easy, right? The other point that I, um, the sanctuary space size based on the dimension is less than approved. However, the total square footage still remains to 2,228 square feet as approved, and the number of seat is less than the approved plan. So I'm not sure why that discrepancy. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to be repetitive. I, I hear the comments from the chair and uh, the other two commissioners. I, I agree with them all. The, uh, during reading, reviewing this case, I felt like they are conceding that, yes, we did something wrong, and we want to fix. And I'm not sure there is, there is a, an issue of mistrust between the entity and the public and, and the board. So I'm, I'm not sure how this could be fixed. Uh, I believe the parking is, is a big issue here, the violations. Uh, if they need us to move forward with this case, they need to explain to us how they're going to handle the violations, how can they resolve the parking issue, how can they prove to us that it's not going to be a business catering, it's going to be just something for the synagogue. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure how this could be done. The only thing I'm, I'm thinking of, but I'm not sure how can we achieve that, if there is some sort of a, a term here and we can give them like that, Probation return for six months or a year and, and see what's going on, but I'm, I'm not sure how to like do that with an amendment. So, but it's it's I believe it's it's their job mm -hmm. to prove to us that they're gonna be a, a good neighbor from from now on. If we grant this, if we decide to move forward with it, like I said, they need to prove to us that they're gonna be good neighbors for the community. And I'm not sure how this is going to be achieved. Yeah. I think that there needs to be some real physical, tangible changes here um, uh, to ensure that this uh, is no longer a catering hall, because it's quite obviously a catering hall. And that's including but not limited to removal of the commercial kitchen. I agree. Um, 
I don't want to echo, uh, I don't, I don't want to repeat, or I, I believe that board uh, listed most of the things that I was concerned with. I, I do feel like I should echo that I do think a new pro because the change, there are so many changes, a new programmatic needs yes. analysis mm -hmm. needs to be made. Yeah. Um, and we, because of what the community board said and what uh, Commissioner um, Trump has said, I do think we need a new parking analysis. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and, and the parking shouldn't be like based on the fact that 75% of people coming are within the court. Of the <coughs> because, yes, I could, I could understand this with worship mm -hmm. thing. People tend to worship at the closest <coughs> worship close to them. But when it comes to wedding, if I have a wedding, I'm not sure whom I'm going to be inviting to attend. So it could be somebody from too. half a mile away or 20 miles away. Yes, yeah. if, if you start like inviting people from outside the neighborhood, it's going to be a huge parking issue. So we need two parking as a one on religious ceremony. Uh, for that, and the other one is for all of the events and functions that are right. being held. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they have a schedule of events that have happened or is happening. We should look at that. We did that with some of the other projects, yeah. and we should get that list. And and then, based on the timing, have parking requirements and analysis yeah. done uh, during and around that time I, in I, the area. I think that. it would save time if they start making some certain deals with uh, yeah. where they can park these cars. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Which will be difficult in this area. Yeah, ju just well, it's a very residential area, so there aren't that many. We want to be clear with, oh, with a catering business. It's not gonna fly that yes. you use the current conditions for parking. You have mm -hmm. to find somewhere else to store the cars during events. And, and I agree with uh, Commissioner uh, Shibata that we should get a new programmatic needs study because the floor area, dimensions, room sizes. Yeah, I, I was really, getting an it's echo. Really echoing. Yeah. yeah. The floor area dimensions and the room sizes and locations have changed, um, and there are new programs like the youth program. I don't think those were spelled out at the last mm -hmm. programmatic needs, so we do need a new programmatic needs, especially when it's up and running. It will be easier to even provide that. Right. Um, to better understand. So, and and you know, and just to pick up on the subject of having a commercial kitchen like that with, I mean, I take one look at that kitchen and you know that's a busy kitchen. You see how many active griddles there are and ovens and so on. And, and the advertising online that shows that there's somebody, I think his name is David, who can cook you up your, you know, your event at your house or wherever. So obviously it's running as an active commercial. If anything, what's happening is the food's coming coming in from the trucks to get delivered when it's pre you know, when it's raw and then it's being cooked up and it's getting loaded back on a truck to go out to wherever it is it was ordered for, right? So you've got a commercial operation. And um, and if we look at it, we have another application coming up soon after this one where you look at it and they have a warming kitchen and that's and if that synagogue can handle a warming kitchen which is what we see in most synagogues then why can't this one mm -hmm. right and you uh, whether you serve frozen pizza which they're saying is not an acceptable or you do something more elaborate than that there's a list i have this list of all the kosher caterers that you can order from from outside to bring, and then you have chafing dishes and warming trays and so on, and that's how everybody else is doing it. And so there's, there's just no excuse. So. Just, just to, like, yeah. heads up. If, if they come and say, no, it's not going to be business catering, it's going to be something for the synagogue, and, and we, we, we don't need the additional parking, is there any way that we can test that? We have like, never like been ran, successful. Ran. So, so that's the thing. We, they didn't have the right to build the way they built, install a kitchen the way they did, and so I frankly don't think that they have shown good faith in complying with the law. Right? They built not according to the plans that were approved by us, or according to the plans approved by the Department of Buildings. So they have no sort of track record of reliability. And so I don't have any reason to believe that if we say, go forth and be good, that they will go forth and be good. I'm, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm not saying, just say, okay, go, just, you got it. No, is there a way to test them? 
for a period of six months or a year to make sure that we're going to be a good neighbor? I think six months. I'm talking year. about legally. Can can we grant? Well, we can at, We can certainly do something. We could. We've done it on others. Can we do right? a term? You do a short lease. You grant yeah. them six months, and then in the and we've seen that we had that on a gym. We granted them six months, and they completely messed up in the six months, and then we decided to terminate the gym. Right. So you could certainly do something like that with this. I'm thinking of switching to a term. If you can grant them for a year and they go behave beautifully for a year, and after the year. Yeah, they got it. it, they are done with it, they gotta yes. go back to whatever. Right. But I'm saying, can we switch to a term, like grant for a year, if they are a good neighbor, make it five years, and if they are a good neighbor, next next term, 10 years. But if from the first grant they don't behave, then they are not in compliance and we're done. I don't know. I mean, I suppose we can, but it requires a lot of monitoring on our part and the neighbor's part and all that. But there's, a, there's also an argument that that's what we did. Yeah. There's also an argument yes. that that's what we did. There's an argument that we've done this, that, that they have violations because of this. They have plenty of chances to, to turn themselves around. Um, and, and it's not like they're, they're being entirely upfront about what's going on either. Uh, it's not one of those, okay, we made a mistake. You know, they, they, it's not, and I, I, do, I know where you read that. They were like, oh, it's not going to be used as a kid anymore. But there was no, no, uh, no follow through. Right. Um, no admitting. And then, oh, and then the solutions are let's put more uh, garbage receptacles around. That that's not a solution to these the the the, the, the problem in the community. Um, mm. I, I if 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 the if removing the commercial kitchen would take something away from the synagogue and its operation as a synagogue, I would agree with you completely. But the only thing that removing, in my opinion, I'm not sure, it, maybe they have an argument, but it seems like removing commercial kitchen would only affect their commercial, their ability to be a commercial catering mm -hmm. facility. Right. Um, and they're not even saying that. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I think we just need to review the programmatic need, and I feel like if the plan, we approve a plan, set of plans, and in the uh, set of plans we say this cannot be a commercial kitchen, and it's just a warming kitchen of such dimension, and that is what is submitted as part of the approval to uh, DOB. And if they are continuously in violation, then we have more action to take, uh, in both from a fire hazard, from code hazard. Everything. They already have all those violations. And, right. They have 42 violations and $150,000 or something like that in yeah. fines. If that's not enough to Deter frighten them. you well, back you into Fair behavior, enough. right? Fair enough. And they're ignoring the violations. They don't pay them. Some okay. are in default. Some are, you know. Okay. I would that would scare me. If I got a violation for ten thousand dollars, I I might stop my behavior. Right? It's a lot of money. Ten thousand dollars. Okay. <laughs> Fair point. I stopped driving for a month. If I get a ticket for a hundred dollars. There you go. So <laughs> that's you. <laughs> okay. Move on. Yeah. Item number 11, 196.15BZ, 250 Mercer Street, Manhattan. This is an extension of time. No notice is required. Right. Um, I just want to clarify the, re <coughs> the resolution that we have states that the special permit expires in 2025, not 2019, which is the date referred to in this description. The heading description says it um, expires on October 23rd, 2019. But actually, it expires in 2025. Oh, okay. What expires in 2019 is the time to obtain a CFO. Right. So it's just badly worded in that heading. So I just want to make sure we're not kind of pursuing the wrong thing. So they're coming here in plenty of time before the expiration of the term. It's just they didn't get their CFO. Um, the materials provided should have demonstrated that the site complies with the conditions. Um, they need to provide that information. They have to provide massage therapist licenses. Um, and I also, in terms of this whole subject of coming back every two years for a CFO, I want to understand whether it's actually possible for them to obtain a CFO if the rest of the building has open alteration applications that this PCE can't control, mm -hmm. right? So I don't want to have them come back every year and a half because there's no way that the building can obtain right. a CFO. So if we could get more information on that. Mm -hmm. I think this is a large building. I just don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Any other comments? No. 
Anybody? No? Item number 12, 2018-18-BZ, 2228-2250 Linden Boulevard, Brooklyn. Um, no notice requirements for extensions of time. Um, they did need to show compliance with the conditions of the grant as well as with the site plan. Um, I, you know, I, sometimes I hear it, the site plan showed it, but it wasn't listed as a condition of approval. The drawings are the approved drawings. You have to comply with the approved drawings. It doesn't have to be listed as a condition to indicate that the, what you do has to look like the drawings. Otherwise, we have to verbally describe what the drawings say, which renders the purpose of the drawings irrelevant. And by the way, how do you describe what the drawings say? Well, you could say conditioned on them being like these drawings. Right. It is yeah. part of the conditions, right? right? Substantially comply with the drawings. That's what it says, it's right? It's the first condition. It's the first condition, right? So, um, so they need to show that it complies with the site plan. They have to provide photos of the exterior and interior perimeters so we can understand that they've um, complied. Um, I'd like to understand why the landscaping has not been installed if the approval was one year ago. Um, I, I think we should there, therefore not agree on this until the landscaping is a, a pro, impro, installed because it seems like they're not doing it because they're not doing it. Um, the comments from Commissioner Otley Brown are landscaping and tree planting not in compliance. The site is not in the greatest condition as per a site visit. Lots of trucks parking in the parking lot. Why? Um, others? No. Nobody, no other comments? I had okay. no, no additional comments. Just a note for the board. A, resp just gonna... a response was made this morning uh, to the fire department uh, letter received last week. So the fire department is going to try and um, have inspections go out to the site. Okay, so we didn't get a letter from fire. They just asked that. No, the fire department did give us a letter. I, I'm not sure. I didn't. If I didn't see the no, fire I department letter. I did not letter. see the fire department letter. Oh, I thought I, I followed you may have, we didn't morning. See. Yeah, okay. that's why we didn't see it. <laughs> okay. So okay, we'll straighten that out, but just yeah. heads up. <laughs> so. Okay. So fire department is going to go inspect. Is that it? Is that what the letter says? Yeah. Okay. No, it's an email back and forth between the ah, applicant okay. And, okay. and Chief Daly. Okay. Appeals calendar continued hearing items. Item number 13, 2019-172A, 10 McGuire Court, Staten Island. Um, for me, really, the issue was the substantial loss that would occur if the house were made to comply with current regulations, um, because it seems to me, um, with respect to the amount of construction in place prior to the 2002 rezoning to an R3X, um, the construction was it had vested construction, right? The overlay diagram that they provided shows that the rear of the house is now viewed as sitting in a required rear yard instead of a side yard, and that that portion of the house would have to be removed to comply. Um, it, there's a claim that the perimeter wall height was reduced in the regulations, but oddly, the drawings that they gave us don't have any dimensions on the approved drawings, so-called approved drawings, or on the markup. So we don't know what the height of the perimeter wall is at, in an as-built situation or what was approved. Um, they also don't show compliance with really much of the zoning. They don't show compliance with front or side yard regulations. Um, so to the extent I'd say that the property vests, it must be shown to comply with the R32 regulations that existed at the time. DOB provided a letter that indicates that it isn't clear whether a building permit was pulled for this house um, as objections to an audit were apparently not responded to. So, you know, usually we have a kind of cut and dry. DOB says a valid permit was issued. So in this situation, they don't seem to be able to make such a statement because of the audit. Um, I also don't see, um, when I look at the current R32 and R3X regulations, and then I actually did look at the city planning reports to go back 
to see if I could see any changes in height regulations. Mm -hmm. There's no difference in height between R32 and R3X, as far as I could tell. Or if, or if there is, R32 is more strict. So then it, then it doesn't really matter. Um, this site is, and prior to 2002, was in the special South Richmond district, which was effective in 1975, and is also in a lower density growth management area. So to the extent that these regulations applied at the time of vesting, so you have to look at what did the regulations look like in 2001, basically. Um, the applicant needs to show compliance. Uh, the approved drawings, which apparently are perforated in 2003, um, so I'm not sure the relevance, make no mention of these zoning districts. You don't see any sign of an SRD or lower density growth. Um, I can't actually read the perforation dates, but the revision dates are 2003. So what might have been happening is that the plans were filed in the late 90s, like 98, and then there were post-approval amendments done, and there, this is a perforated set, so DOB approved that perforated set, but unless it was self-certified, in which case it just gets perforated, right? So, I, so I'm quite concerned about saying it complies with the zoning of prior zoning unless they show it to us that it does, right? So, uh, and then Commissioner Otley Brown's comments are, serious loss is illustrated by showing the portion of the home non-compliant with current zoning building code regulations and would have to be removed. In a nutshell, they feel the entire home would have to be raised and rebuilt. They're saying that because the perimeter wall height they claim is different today than it was before, but I don't find substantiation for that. Um, I, and Commissioner Otley Brown says, I am inclined to accept this submission as satisfying the findings. It's clear that their biggest issue is their delay in filing with DOB to finish the home and got caught up by the rezoning, even though the home was close to substantially completed much earlier. That aspect of it, I definitely agree, but I don't know that it complies with R3. So, any other comments? Um, you know, I, I'm going through my notes because I had taken down uh, the comparison of R3X requirement versus R32, and I'm not able to locate it, so let me go back, yeah. and I, I'll weigh in on okay. it tomorrow. Okay, yeah, please. Uh, I just want to say that the rear wall would have to be removed in any event. Yes, right? definitely that. And I think that that in itself might be enough to say serious loss. Yeah. Uh, um, the only question is the, the one that you stated earlier about uh, whether or not there was a, a lawful permit, and I, right. I want to hear a little bit more about that uh, for me. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree that the that removing a back portion, it's more than the rear wall, it's a section right. of the house, right? So that's a major calamity on a house, right? You just like wreck the place at the back anyway, even if the heights don't have to change. So maybe you don't have to raise the house, but what I'm concerned about is that we would potentially be granting a house that didn't comply with zoning. So they have to establish that the house complies with the R32. Right? Either zoning. At, any zoning. At, at, any, at any time. Because we had a case like that, a variance case, where <laughs> the architect designed a house that didn't comply with then zoning. They tried to vest it, and we discovered, wait a minute, it doesn't comply with any zoning. And so then they came back for a variance, and we said, what's the detrimental reliance in that case, the, the malpractice of the architect? So that was... That was the situation then. It was very unfortunate, but that's how it would happen. Okay. Any other comment? No, no I have no additional comments. New cases, item number 14, 2019 259 BZY, 23 East 39th Street, Manhattan. Although there are, in fact, no notice requirements for extensions of time, proof of service of initial application, and notice of hearing was provided to officials, even though sort of late, um, but nonetheless, there's no notice requirements. Statement of fact is incorrect. Um, in reference to the prior 11-331 board action on this site, it is 2017-264 um, BZY, not 64 BZY. Um, Photos and construction do tracking document from August 2019 show the building nearly complete. Um, I'd just like to know what the status is today because that's a lot of time between those that documentation and now. 
Um, and Commissioner Otley Brown's uh, comment was <coughs> the 129,441 man hours completed by July 2nd, 19 is out of how many total man hours estimated. Mm -hmm. and other comments? Um, I think based on the site visit, I mean, the building looks complete. It's just there are little finishes, interior finishes that seems to be outstanding, but I didn't go all the way inside to right. see status. I, I second that. You'll second that? I second that. Okay. Uh, it looks like, a, yeah, it's like a lot of work was done here. Um, yeah, and so in six months, it, should, it, it could very well be finished. Months. It could be almost done, right? I mean, one of if you look at the construction schedule, construction tracking document, one of the things that shows 50% complete is the installation of hooks, bathroom hooks. Right. So I don't think that holds your CO up. Right. <laughs> yeah, most of the things that were outstanding at, as yeah. of July were all mm -hmm. interior finish works, nothing. Yes, so, but hooks, yeah. you know, yeah. the inspector yeah. doesn't go around and say, oh, well, you're missing no. a place for me to hang my bathrobe. No, no, so. see, I vote for you. <laughs> okay. Zoning, may I move on? Uh-huh. Zoning calendar, continued hearing items. Item number 15, 2017, 233BZ, 446-448 Park Avenue, Brooklyn. This is re uh, withdrawn, yeah. not adjourned, sorry. <clears throat> Item number 16, 2017, 265 BZ, uh, 318, 320, 54th Street, Brooklyn. This application is being adjourned. Yeah, they, it's actually being administratively adjourned by agreement with our executive director to allow filing of a companion application. Which has been done. Which has been done. Okay, right. Which has been filed, right? Filed, yes. I think this week. Or... Right? But it was done last week. Yeah, for, for filing it this morning. Yeah. Um, item number 17, 2017, 261 BZ, 527 East New York Avenue, Brooklyn. Um, actually, all of my comments that I had at the last hearing were responded to by right. making corrections on the drawing, so I, I didn't have any further comments. Okay. Anybody else? Um, Commissioner Otley Brown had just one comment, and that was the in the plans, the rear elevation, uh, BSA drawing 10, does not show that the building is setting back on the third and the fourth floor. Oh, on the, say it again, the, the rear elevation. The rear elevation um, drawings, yeah. I think BSA number 10, um, doesn't show the, doesn't setbacks. Show the uh, setbacks. On the third and fourth floor? Right, right. The sections, it's visible. Plans. plans, it's visible. It's only the elevation didn't pick it up. And I think that may be just a more of a rendering. That could be just a line weight. Yeah, thing. line weight yeah. thing. We have a lot of challenges with line weights. In this so so we want to revise plan? Or? Yeah, so the, the drawings have to make clear that there's setbacks on God all bless. the floors. Because we often, so DOB sometimes gets confused, right? And then, then the architect may say, no, we don't have to do it because it doesn't show it on this elevation. Yeah. And we want consistency. OK. Um, maybe the case manager should call them and let them know. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give them a call. Yeah. I think someone's here for And I think we are okay with. Um, no? Do we want to add a note saying that that space uh, will not be used for any events or any? Uh, any? I think it already has. It a has it. That I know. Says That's no. for the roof, but for the oh, setbacks. Oh, you're talking about the setbacks. Yes. Just to be on the safe side. Uh, no. Yeah. A no. No events. Yes. And no lights. No, no lights. Lighting. No amplification. No, no amplification. No amplification. Okay. Well, events would be hard because it's a four foot. Setback. That is true. Bocce. Okay, no events. <laughs> All right. All right. Move on? Yeah. Item number 18, 2018, 177 BZ, 2061 Ocean Parkway, Brooklyn. Um, I believe the requested changes were made to the drawings and um, now that Chase is back, I would ask that he scour along with the applicant um, for consistency among all the pages on the drawings. So hopefully the set's fully coordinated. <laughs> Move on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Item number 19, 2019, 15BZ, 7940 Cooper Avenue, Queens. This matter is being requested to be adjourned. That's right. They need to collect data on traffic, yeah. I guess. For DOT. Yeah. Item number 20, 2019-21BZ, 2223 East 14th Street, Brooklyn. Okay, the, um, the dem demolition plan and the first floor um, proposed plan are not coordinated. This needs to be uh, corrected and the amount of uh, walls recalculated, walls to be retained recalculated. They have to uh, show the dimensions of the existing walls to remain on the proposed plans and on the demo plans. They should be the same dimensions. Um, these do, they need to match. Otherwise, you don't know you don't know what's going on. Um, and they need to properly designate existing walls to remain versus new construction on the proposed first floor plan because it's not correct. Um, the rear yard incursion at the second floor was reduced to 25 feet. The, and the height was justified based on other two-story buildings on the social block. So those were things that we requested at the last. So this is something that could be done now to correct the existing condition. I mean the demo one. plan and the first and the drawings to match. Um, so please call the applicant. Make sure. Darryl. Okay, Daryl. Right. Call the applicant. Make sure. Okay. Okay. Item number 21, 2019, 178 BZ, 1426 East 24th Street, Brooklyn. Okay. The, also, this one had similar problems. The demolition drawing doesn't match the actual proposed plan in terms of material to be retained. Dimensions on both drawings need to match. Indications of walls to be removed and retained need to match. At the last hearing, we requested floor area calculation drawings, which I don't see in the submission. Um, if the second floor was set back by five feet and the attic by 10 feet compared to the last version, how does the floor area go up and the FAR remain at 0 0.999? How is the 0 0.99 justified in light of the 0 0.91 as the largest building on this side of the block, um, and a BS, which was a BSA grant? The revised project ignores that comment from the last hearing. Um, the size of the building needs to be reduced to be in line with the largest building on that side of the block. Um, this was the instruction from last time. And I think what ended up happening is the drawings, the floor plates got smaller, and then another floor plate got bigger to compensate for them getting smaller, which was the whole point in reducing, or one of the points. Um, the drawing dates are also very old, and then the drawing dates to be to reflect the current date. Um, those are my comments. Anybody else? New cases on the zoning calendar, item number one, 281891 <coughs> BZ. We're going to postpone this case till January 28th. Oh. There was a flaw in the notice that was administrative, uh, so we, oh. yeah. So we're just moving it to January 28th. Okay. Item number two, 2019, 169 BZ, 638 Sharrett's Road, Staten Island. Okay, this is a legalization that opened in October of 2017. Um, we have proof of service of initial application to officials and proof of notice of hearing to officials and neighbors. Community board recommends approval with one opposed. We have DOI. Um, I didn't find fire department on this, but maybe something came in now in the morning. I don't think so. No. Um, no. We seem to be missing a floor plan. Um, both are for the mezzanine level. Um, and so we need the first floor plan. First floor. Um, and they need to provide a section through the space because really this is a double height space. So in order for us to understand how this works, it's a climbing gym. Um, we need a section through the building, through, through the space. Mm -hmm. um, Commissioner Otley Brown's comment is since this is a legalization, they have to show proof of fire alarm and sprinkler system. That's fire department's review of the application. Um, and with respect to uh, disabled access, the entrance is at grade, but um, notes there isn't an elevator access to the mezzanine, 
which may or may not be needed according to uh, ADA requirements because as long as you have an equivalent activity on the first floor, right? So I don't really know what goes on on the mezzanine <coughs> level. Um, <coughs> yeah, because the drawings are really very difficult basic. to read. Yeah. yeah, it was difficult to read because since we did, we only had one floor plan and trying to understand the lay of the land. Yeah, that was my comment. That's it. So, um, just to pick up on that, the drawings are really difficult to read in part because everything is one line weight, the skinniest line. Um, it doesn't look like it's actually drawn by a person who does drawings. Um, and so they need to clarify what's a wall, what's not a wall, where's the equipment, et cetera. It, uh, the drawings are very poor um, and, and hard to read. So if they could please improve that as well. Anybody else on that? No? Okay. Item number three, 2019, 170BZ, 385 Manhattan. Um, I had a little issue with DOI, so I'm still waiting for one of the forms. Okay, and we also need fire department on this yeah. one. Um, we have proof of service of initial application to officials and proof of notice of hearing to officials and neighbors. Community board recommends approval with two opposed and two abstaining. It is not yet open, and we do have a certificate of no effect from, uh, from Landmarks Commission. Um, Commissioner Otley Brown asks, is there a massage being offered because there is a treatment room? If so, give licenses, but the, I don't believe it's <coughs> open. Um, uh, I, I went online to see what the status of it is, and they're announcing this exciting new, it, the whole building will be a club, essentially, and this is a gym within the club. Um, uh, they do need to give sound attenuation details. Oh, okay. Um, and she asks also, is there going to be signage there? Um, right now there's a big fabric sign on the scaffolding that says High Court. The building is still being rehabbed and it's not clear whether it can be accessed by the public in any way, not knowing whether it's open therefore. But um, it looks like that fabric is just a temporary sign, so they should show what the signage is. Okay. Um, other comments? I had the same comments. Okay. Um, they need to provide the signage and drawings. Yeah, I have the same, but uh, in addition to that, uh, there is, it sounds like there is a sub cellar in the building. Uh, so they need to show to us what, what kind of use in the sub cellar. I, I didn't find that in the statement of facts. And they need to describe the activity in the gym. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't like not sure about whether they have weight drops, what kind of activity inside, in addition to the fire department in the DUI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just showing it as like exercise rooms. It doesn't say what goes on in there, right? Yeah, but weight drops could be some, some sort of exercise, so you're not sure. Yeah, right. <coughs> At least though, the tenant occupies the entire building because it's it's like a Soho house or one of those things. And, it's and entire this is a close <coughs> story old building, so this is one yeah. of the buildings that usually, you know, structurally are not perfect shape and could be some reverberates yeah, yeah. right okay move on mm -hmm. item number 4 2019 bz 112-51 northern boulevard queens okay we have proof of service of initial application to officials and proof of notice of hearing to officials and neighbors there is a strong letter of opposition signed by then Borough President Katz, Assemblymember <coughs> Aubrey, and Councilmember Moya, Moya expressing severe concerns about the building's height and whether it complies with the zoning regulations generally. In particular, it, the letter complains that the developer has given little information to the community about the planned project. <coughs> we have a July letter from Community Board 3 asking that we hold off on our decision until they've had a chance to meet in September, but I don't find any subsequent submission from them in the folder. If we did, we get it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we we did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what was the? The community vote was to disapprove. Uh, it was 33 in uh, favor of disapproving. Okay. Anybody in favor? One. Okay. Or actually, one abstention maybe. Was that was not okay? Clear, but I'm sorry, I didn't have an update. Okay, so let me just get. 
Um, we have one letter in opposition describing dangerous construction conditions involving an explosion. Um, there is a record of DOB violations concerning a wall collapse and explosion in January 2019. Um, there is a stop work order on the site with penalties outstanding. There are 17 open DOB and 15 open ECB violations with over $120,000 in penalties outstanding. Um, violations as recent as November 2019 are related to site safety and protection of adjoining properties and continuing to work in spite of a stop work order. BSA will not consider an application with open penalties and unsafe site conditions. These must be addressed before we come to any decisions here. Um, and I'd like us to reach out to DOB concerning these issues. So I know that the best squad's been involved in some of these things, but I don't know how recently. So, um, um, and I, I think, th I may have missed this, but I think there were other letters in opposition and I may not have noted yeah. those. Um, all building heights on the drawings must be expressed in NAVD 88 above mean sea level, so AMSL, and also in height above ground level, um, because AMSL doesn't mean anything to the Department of Buildings, and you can't tell whether it's complying with zoning when it's in that. <coughs> they need to provide support from a licensed surveyor that the comparative elevations are correct. We had a really bad experience with one of these um, where there, the architect assumed it knew what the relative um, values were and, in fact, was off by a couple of feet. And it wasn't until a surveyor got involved that we actually had the correct information. So it needs to be from a licensed surveyor and not just the architect saying, trust me, it's okay. Um, they do need to provide a site survey so we can see what the height elevations are on the property. Um, they need to clarify whether, quote, height above ground level, unquote, as shown in the chart on the statement of facts, is measured from actual grade or is an elevation, i.e., how is site elevation at 45 feet related to mean sea level or mean curb level? On what datum is the, is the zero being measured? So I just feel like the datum are all over the place. Um, the drawings are dated April 2019. Um, provide the most recent set of drawings for the proposed project. Um, for all of these applications, we require the report of an experienced FAA engineer that takes us through the analytical process showing compliance with the zoning regulations and the FAA requirements and the differences in height between zoning maximum and FAA permitted. We have very good samples of these reports to use as a model. And I'm sorry, but this model should have been given to the applicant during the notice of comment period. Um, in addition, drawings must clearly show in a scale large enough and with line weights clear enough for us to be able to read, which they aren't currently, compliance with all zoning regulations. The building that would be approved by the special permit would then be the envelope into which any modifications to the building design would need to fit or the applicant must return to BSA for an amendment. Hence, the uh, illustrative quote unquote notation on the drawings must be removed. So this is something that the, the community expressed a lot of concern about. We don't even know what the building's going to look like. You can't come here and say, we just want the maximum and then we'll figure it out later. They have to know what their project is and come here with a known project. Um, the sky exposure plane shown on the BSA zoning calculation sheet indicates this is an alternate setback building. That should be clearly indicated on the drawings, but I'd like to know, would the building be shorter? It would be, obviously, if it was a standard setback building. Um, the, the community is very concerned about the height of the building, in particular in light of the scale of the surrounding community where all the houses are two stories, basically, right? Um, and also with respect to the proximity to the airport. So I don't see the reason in designing an alternate setback building if a regular setback building will drop the height of the building down by probably a couple of floors, right? The statement of fact states that without support, um, uh, states without support that all of the floor area might not be able to be used absent this special permit. That is simply conjecture if there's no massing study conducted to prove this. 
So uh, I'm not sure that that's correct. This is a building with alternate setbacks, so it's not using its entire lot. And it also has this big donut cut out in the middle, so that's probably not a true statement that they make in their statement of facts. Um, they need to show clearly the building height to the roof and to the bulkheads and the height to the top of the required lighting. Um, and from what the FAA document, um, um, the t FAA document states that 30, 376 AMSL is the maximum height figure um, that's permitted. The FAA determination states that it expires in 2018 unless certain filings are made with the FAA office. The applicant says they provided proof that such filings were made, but I didn't find them. But in addition, the filings are based on this idea that if construction starts, then you get to hold the FAA determination, right? But um, if you look at the status of the construction, it's a hole in the ground with a stop work order, and there's some supportive excavation work that's done, but apparently that's it. So um, I'm not really sure that that's what the FAA had in mind when they said construction start if it's just a hole in the ground. And um, given that the determinations are dated November 17th, 2016, three years ago, right? I would like to hear from the FAA engineer report and the FAA itself that no conditions at the airport or in terms of FAA regulations have changed that would result in a different determination if the applicant were, application were filed today. Given how many crazy things are happening in the world, I don't want to be responsible for the FAA having to commit to a building close to the airport when it wished it didn't, right? Um, and then Commissioner Otley Brown says, why doesn't the statement reference everything in NAVD 88 it, as opposed to only in AMSL? So it's similar comments, but that's a statement of, um, in a statement of facts. Also, as a note, this site is, um, is an E designated for UST testing protocols and hazmats. Um, they need to provide proof that the testing and remediation was conducted pursuant to the environmental easement recorded against the property and the E designation. And, um, and as um, Tracy points out, this, while this is a type two applicant, um, for seeker purposes, it will need a noise analysis similar to the ones that we have requested in other recent 7366s. Other comments? Um, the drawings, uh, my comments were primarily with the drawings um, and uh, how it, you know, we should put, you have them use the sample uh, to make the drawings more legible. The bulkhead, um, as I was zooming in as much as possible, I mean, FAA approved it at seven and 376 feet uh, above mean uh, sea level, and the proposed bulkhead would be at 375.5 feet uh, above mean sea level. So uh, it's well within that. I really. But then they add a light, so the light. Yeah, has within to the be, light, yeah. including the light. This oh, is including, okay. the, uh, including the light. Um, is at that. Um, that's I was. I had to zoom in quite a bit yeah, to get to that to level. See. So yeah. I, uh, I think the sample points <clears throat> can help improve um, on getting to those points. And uh, I really did not have any comments uh, on you know the building since it's an classified building. They have right to build it any any building form they have, mm -hmm. as long as FAA is okay with it and have given the maximum height limit, and they, uh, they stay within that, including the lights. Mm -hmm. I really did not have any issues, so we, they just need to provide in the drawings and clearly show that. Mm -hmm. Th those, were, those were my only comments. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. I, um, <clears throat> I share the comments regarding the uh, quality of the drawings, the reference elevations. Commissioner, could you move your mic? Yes. It, speak yes, close sure. to the mic, right? Yeah. I share the comments regarding the quality of the drawings and the um, Reference elevations, the quality of the elevations actually are, are not that good at all. Uh, I'm looking to see what is the status of the construction. I'm looking at some Google images. I can see that uh, excavation support is partially in place. Excavation is partially completed. Some foundation walls are in. My understanding is that the building they are uh, going with is about 40-story building. 
Uh, I'm not sure if that was the original plan from the beginning. I believe a building of that scale would require part foundation. And I couldn't see... It would require part what? Foundation, ha oh, deep foundations. Okay. And looking at the Google images, I can see any kind of like pile driving or pile installation rig on site. So especially with some foundation walls already in. Mm -hmm. So was this the original plan? I, 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 I'm I like between two forces here, like thinking about this project. Yes, I understand it could be an as of right because of the size of the of the, the lot. It could be an as of right building, but in the meantime, it requires a special permit. The special permit is the relevant part of the construction here, relevant to the special <coughs> permit, is the height of the building. So it, it's not as of right unless, you know, it's limited in height as of right. It has yes, to come to I, us. I, I to totally be higher, understand. Right? But I, I should have said actually, it's an as of right building should La Guardia is not there. Okay, yeah. Yeah. But because LaGuardia is there, now we need a special permit. And right. one of the findings for the special permit is we, we have the special permit is kind of like two umbrellas. The one that's specific to the subject, and then we have somewhere else. We have, we have like a bigger umbrella for the special permits that the character of the neighborhood mm -hmm. shouldn't be impaired, shouldn't be impacted. And looking at the neighborhood, I can see no building around this site is... is probably taller than 10 story. Mm -hmm. So actually I'm very nervous, like blessing a building that's 39 story in, in the neighborhood. That, that, that I don't know how we can like go with this, but I believe if, if, they, if they like modify the layout, which we don't know what kind of layout they are going right now, but looking at the plan view they submitted, I believe if the setback gets smaller they stretch the building outside towards the property lines and, and, and they go with the same size of the building, I believe that could make the building less tall. Mm -hmm. I understand that, that probably the attitude for the developer here is taller is bigger. The taller the building, probably the more prestigious are the units at the top floors. But they, they need to compromise some, some like prestigiousness of, of the building for the neighborhood of the car, the character of the neighborhood. So I, I need them to think of that and, 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 and to probably talk to the neighborhood, try to come up with like intermediate solution with, with the borough president or with the neighborhood to come up with a solution for the size of the building, for the height of the building, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? I do appreciate Commissioner uh, Chandra's. You have to speak I, I up. I appreciate okay. Commissioner Chandra's uh, position. The 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 only I, I think that as the board's guided by uh, the special permits, we're guided by 7301 as well uh, to look at to to see the the effect this has on the community as well as a number of other things. Um, 7303. 7303. That's that's really all I have to say for at this moment. We're, it, it's not the neighborhood character. It's not a neighborhood <coughs> it's character fighting. Effect. It's the benefits to the community is outweighed by the benefits to the project or something to that effect, right? right. I, I think I just want to make my position clear in this is that in the past, all um, applications that we have reviewed. Um, uh, under the current board, we have all we have relied on FAA's determination, and and quote unquote, I mean no pun intended, green light to tell us whether the building can be built. We really did not um, look at um, that was the neighborhood cards. The well-being of the neighborhood was: will the building be a detriment to the flight path, and will there will that then result in a harm to the neighborhood. That's how it has been written, that's how it has been evaluated, and that's why we have always deferred to FAA's determination and Port, Port Authority of New York and New Jersey's determination, which is always consistent. Um, and um, right. I 
think this requires a separate discussion and not at this hearing. I, I totally we appreciate to what you I totally appreciate. I, I appreciate that this, the very purpose of the special permit is to ensure safety <coughs> with regard to FAA. I, I appreciate that entirely. Um, I do believe that there is some sort of conflict. There, there still may remain a conflict uh, with with regard to what the board is going to approve uh, and what what steps we have to take. But I, I certainly understand and, and appreciate that that statement. This is what that special permit was in initially intended for. Um, I, you know, I, I think for me the the distinction is mostly that it's obviously not a design project, even though they have they have excavation because they've had a stop work order for a couple of years, I think, on the site. Um, they've been struggling on this site with what to do with it for years and years and years. And they filed an application at DOB for a much shorter building just to be able to get started. <coughs> so basically what they're doing is they're doing kind of basic excavation and SOE or whatever based on a drawing set of drawings that were approved that's not the final project. And they seem to not really know what the final project is. Most of these applications that we've seen, they really know their project. We have a lot of information. The drawings are pretty detailed, right? Um, and so in this case, it seems more like they're fishing around for the maximum envelope. Um, and this is actually, I think, the only application we've had where there's been so much community opposition to this building. I think also the, the times have changed in, this, in like little since the last time we saw this because, I mean, we just had an airplane shot out of the sky. I mean, you know, there, there are a lot of things that are happening now close to airports that are making people more concerned. So I, that's, for me, it's like if the FAA says we're still good with 376 feet, that matters a lot to me. Right now, I feel that three years ago, they were asked a question that they might not answer the same way today. Um, but I also think that if the building, we most of the time don't see them design a building to be taller than needed. We see them using standard setbacks instead of the alternate setbacks, which arguably isn't even right for this neighborhood. These are street wall neighborhoods, you know? So, you know, I'm a little concerned that that it's, it's just an aggressive envelope being pursued as opposed to a design of a building. You know, it's more I, like a zoning envelope project. I think this one, it's kind of interesting. It's really at the end of uh, this neighborhood uh, um, surrounded by highways. all the highways. And yeah. this is like all the approachway ramps to Grand Central, Whitestone, you name it, the whole uh, highway network surrounds this site. And next to it, what you have are the 60s and 70s tower in the park buildings. Mm -hmm. So there, there is enough of that context that's in the R6, that's the alternate height setback, tower in the park type development. And yes, across the street you do have development, that's R6A, but that's what New York City zoning is. One side of the street is R6B, other one is R8A. And I mean, Manhattan, case in point, mid block Sidon is R8B and Avenues is R10. So we do see that juxtaposition of zoning and we do have to see what the zoning was intended for and are there similar built contexts in the R6? There are. There, that's why they have been kept as R6A and this being an irregular lot surrounded by a you know, spaghetti of highway byways, I think the zoning was done in a way so that you could use different kind of building setback forms and everything to ensure you have a development that's not going to be sitting right on top of a highway. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't think that's our, that's what we are here to opine on. It's really the FAA. If And I agree, if FAA is okay with it today, I really don't have any comments mm -hmm. on it. Okay. Any others? I, I, I just yeah. want to clarify about one point that it, it's kind of managing the expectations of everybody here, I mean the applicant and the community. Uh, I believe through review in this case, I, I did read about parking and traffic and, and, and that building is going to create too much traffic for, for the area. I want to clarify that if the developer with the two sit-back scenarios can build the same floor area, <coughs> it means that more or less, it's going to be the same size building, and meaning that it's going to be the same occupancy size for both scenarios, and and same occupancy probably means more or less again same traffic 
trip generation, same <coughs> amount of traffic. So if, if the building gets less tall, that doesn't mean that the, the traffic generated is going to be less. So I believe that traffic argument here is not going to play well right. for, for the community and, and the board president. So they need yes. to like think of this. If, if these people decide, let's say they can build a zero setback building, let's say mm. for, for the argument sake, and, and they can put same floor area building, I don't think there is much difference between the 39 story scenario and a 10 story scenario. Right? With the same amount of yeah, floor with area. the same amount of right, floor Right, that's area. true. Yeah. You know. And they're providing all the required, more than the required more parking the according to their kind of very back of a napkin estimates on what this project is because it doesn't sound like as of April when the drawings are dated, they actually had any idea what the project is, right? Well, I think because, we'd have to see a, a project yeah. to make it approval. Right. Um, so the, right, because it could have been an ambulatory care facility which has a much higher parking requirement than, uh, than say, the whatever, whatever the commercial aspect of it is that they're showing now. I just, uh, I just want to say, but my, my conflict is, is that well, while I agree the the language of the special permit uh, with the, with regard to the specific section does state that uh, if the FAA approves, then we should approve it. My question would be, why would that be here before us then? That's such a strange <laughs> question. You know, we have these special permits where, or it's such a good question, we have these special permits where I don't know why we get asked to determine what the FAA flight paths should be, which is why we go to the FAA engineer and they sh they demonstrate to what us what be, the flight path so is. So the <laughs> Department of Buildings could make that a requirement in an application for it. It wouldn't to make it a special permit. May be requesting us to do a further further analysis of the project. But uh, it's not in the findings. That's the part that's so right, tricky. Right. The findings are simply you know Sim what it is. I I actually think without researching it that this, this subject of an FAA analysis was too complex for DOB to deal with. So they said, DOB can't deal with it. It's too long to make it into a ULERP thing. Let's just give it to BSA, and they'll like work with the FAA somehow, and FAA will bless it, right? Which is effectively how these permits have been handled. But the, the difference that we've been doing is having an FAA consultant come and take us step by step through so we're not just relying on FAA's that report that they submit that doesn't have any diagrams. It actually doesn't show it. <clears throat> what the FAA report doesn't tell us is what's the basis of their analysis, right? Um, we don't see how they do it. They have all these engineers sitting there doing the calculations behind the scenes, but we don't see their calculations. So that's why that outside consultant is so helpful that walks us through it, and their reports are really excellent usually. And yeah, I think just Carl. for the board, it's, it is. Again, the, the waiver through the special permit is contrary to zoning. Mm -hmm. So I believe that that's why it couldn't be waived by DOB. They wouldn't have the authority, right. and it was passed on yeah, us. Yeah. So that's really the only reason it comes here is because it's contrary to 6120 or whatever the three prongs are that, that yes, triggered sir. this. Yeah, and, and, and the silly part about this is the zoning is so far behind the times that it's not reflecting FAA's determination about the various cones and so on. And if, if the zoning regulations were simply amended to reflect FAA criteria or just say FAA has this book, and as long it's, as you comply with the stuff in the book, then, then you're good, we wouldn't have these special permits at all, it seems to me. But maybe these days it's a good thing. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. okay. This concludes the public review session for January 13th, 2020.